Welcome to episode 104. Usually I say the numbers, but now you do. But you're right, it's 104. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome. Um, well, we have uh, uh, we are quite packed. You traveled yeah. uh, last week. To Milan. To Milan. To uh, celebrate some news from Omega. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, lucky you. So you had it in your hands, the new yes. Speedmaster Chronoscope. Yes. 43 millimeters, fitted with a manual wind 9908 with a wonderful Cote de Genève arabesque decoration on the back. See, I, I actually thought it was new because I'm not used to seeing that movement decoration on what you would probably call a three-quarter plate. Yeah. So it's almost like a lange, if you like, or a glasshut original, where they actually, they, they are famed for the three-quarter plates. But that arabesque, it looks like a... It looks like a shell, an oyster shell yeah. on drugs. On drugs. Uh, because that arabesque is just, you know, solar, sideway, uh, odd, and it's really stunning. Uh, because it's manual, it's slightly slimmer. It's Not only 43. It's, yeah, it's, yeah? Yeah. it's uh, you know, the, the, the Speedmaster Moon is 42. That's a sweet spot. Uh, the dark side of the moon is 44.25. This one is 43. Okay. Not limited, because Omega... Do not do limited editions no longer. Of course, there will be, uh, when they do America's Cup or when they do Olympic Games, there will be a numbered uh, series of that. But they're not going to do a James Bond watch limited to 10,007 pieces no longer. <laughs> because it doesn't make any sense. And uh, I I, uh, I spent quite some time with uh, Ashley Mann, the CEO of Omega. And he says, to quote him, uh, we are a client uh, you know, we we listen to our clients. Um, that's pretty good for so a watch brand. <laughs> it's that's pretty that's pretty goddamn Actually, rare. Actually, for all brands, that's it's pretty. It's pretty good. goddamn rare. You you would never hear that. <coughs> you would never hear anyone from Rolex say we are a client-driven brand. You would never hear that. No. At all. But what Actually, also, Rolex responded on the waiting list, right? That's no, they question. didn't. We didn't get a name on who responded. It was just Rolex. So it was not the CEO, it was not the CFO, it was probably some brave PR department. And they didn't tell us anything we didn't know already. That's true. Sorry. But they can't do anything. But No. So yeah. actually, I was hoping when I when I read that on Watch Pro, um, I thought, yeah, cool, they're, they're answering. No, they're not. It's still a secret. Rolex is all about secrets, and that's why we love Talking Rolex Talking about so shells, much. Rolex is a shell. It's an oyster that's it's always an oyster. closed. <laughs> it's hermetically closed. Okay, but back to Omega. Yes. Because it's it's quite something. Um, why, why You were in Milan, right? Yeah. Uh, and why is that? Fashion week. Ah, okay. You, uh, you needed new shoes. No, I didn't. <laughs> and when I, it, the, that was a driver that picked me up in uh, Malpensa. And then when I came to the hotel, uh, these five young kids were standing outside. One of them, you know, just fucking a baseball bat. So I get out of the, of the limo. I'm, I'm just about to probably just grab a hold of his ass. Like, why are you flipping around with a baseball bat? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, when you see that on the street, you think that people are going to fight some, some kind of hooligans. Yeah. But it's fashion, baby. I guess it's said Chanel on the baseball bat or something like that. It's probably and a three hundred euro baseball bat. I realized they were dressed in 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 I don't know futuristic uh, baseball outfit. Uh, sorry, I don't understand fashion. Sorry about that. But um, oh my god, was there because also you have to imagine uh, Milan is two and a half hours train ride from Geneva. So everybody from that, Omega yeah. uh, and all my Swiss colleagues, uh, they came by train. Of course, there was a strike going on, so some of the uh, some of the European uh, European flights were cancelled. So hooray for trains, especially the Swiss. No, so uh, Ashley Mann was really it was a good. Uh, Greg Kissinger, the um, head of production, he was also presenting uh, the chronoscope. See, the the cool thing about the chronoscope, we know that a chronograph, the Speed Speedmaster, was the f world's first chronograph movement with an outer tachymeter ring bezel. Yeah. And you can measure distance and speed on a tachymeter, uh, help with the, with the hands from the chronograph. But it also features a pulsometer on the dial, as well as a telemeter. Yep. So, 
A telemeter is where you actually measure the distance of, for instance, uh, sound. Sound. So if you have a meters. if you have a lightning, uh, you have a lightning, and and after thirty seconds you hear the 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 thunder, then you know it's ten kilometers away and from usually your you count location. One, two, yeah. three, and that's the number yeah. of yeah, yeah, exactly. One bottle of beer, two bottles of beer. Three bottles of beer. Yeah, that's what my dad that's told one, me. That's one kilometer. Yeah, and then of course the pulsation. Um, oh, let's do pulse. No, no pulse. So yeah, you heartbeat. have you have all the thirties and forties chronographs in one watch. Of course, the chronoscope is not a new uh, a new name. Uh, I think it was introduced in the early two thousands. You have one with Ratra Pound actually, um, with you know big overlapping uh, sub registers for the chronograph. I heard it was actually named. Uh, it was actually in a Deville. It was watch. a Deville. It was not a. Yeah, no, it was no, no, not no. a Speedmaster at all. No, 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 no. I mean, yeah. this is called Speedmaster Chronoscope, and the other one was a Deville Chronoscope. A Deville if, Chronoscope. If, if you just uh, look through it, and they were showing all these pieces back from the thirties, of course, from the from the um, from the museum in Bien. So uh, they are already, of course, they had, I, I think, six references in steel. And the bracelet is the so-called Nixon bracelet with that very beautiful clasp. However, this one, because it's called Nixon because it was featured on the Moonshine Speedmaster from 2019. Uh, however, this one has a micro adjustment yeah. in it. So every time there's something new from, from Omega, they just make it a little bit better. And Evolution instead yeah. of revolution. Perfect. Yeah. I think it's uh, you know if you get it on bracelet, it's around eight thousand euros, Massimilius. It's a cool watch. I must admit, I, I saw the dial layout because yeah. if you look at it, yeah. that's the first thing you recognize. Yeah. It's the with with the, with the center dial with the tachymeter with the with the telemeter, pulsometer, pulsometer. Sorry, um, it 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 reminded me of vintage watches. That Absolutely. was the first thing. So I started yeah. looking and I found. Uh, apparently Omega in the 30s was basically already having this kind of dial layout. So yes. it's actually back to the past for them in, yep. a, in a way. They have a, they have a wonderful past. And also the the indices are Arabic, raised Arabic, and the, the hands are feu or leaf, if you like. So yeah. it's a lot of retro in that watch, but still turn it around and enjoy that beautiful 9908 manual wind, Metas, um, certified uh, movement it's really really nice there is also one that people thought it was set in the gold it's not it's bronze and gold so it contains 37.5 percent of nine carat gold okay and then of course you have uh you have your um, palladium to to make it hard and of course you have the bronze uh, alloy as well so it's a very hard alloy but it will age not like a bronze case if you like and the dial on the on more the, subtle on the, on the yeah, way more subtle. Yeah, the dial on the on the bronze gold Speedmaster chronoscope is oxidized bronze. So that that is a spectacular piece, and of the new ones, this is the only one that features a ceramic bezel. So the steel version has a aluminum bezel insert. Beautiful. So a quick recap: the the, the chronoscope. A Speedmaster by Omega, eight thousand euros. Yeah, non limited. Maybe it's, maybe that's actually on a strap. Maybe it's a little bit. Maybe it's eight five on the bracelet. The bracelet is fantastic. Yeah, so you'll probably take it with bracelet. Um, I guess it's, it's not. It's not a watch for me. Uh, I'm very traditional when it comes to uh, to Omega. Uh, I like the, the 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 most recent Speedmaster Moon with the, actually with the plexiglass. Okay. That's a gorgeous piece, uh, and I think that's pretty close to the most perfect uh, Speedmaster made since 1970, I guess. Okay, okay. Uh, but so, actually, I'm going to see the, the premiere of James Bond, finally, two years late, with Omega on Thursday. And I have to admit the Titanium uh, Seamaster with the Titanium Mesh bracelet that is featured in the movie is a gorgeous piece, also not limited. Okay, that was Omega. Yes, sir. We're now moving to to another famous brand. That was really very, good timing. Very it was like popular half brand. hour, 20 minutes on Omega. So now we have to do... The Aqua Racer. 
10 minutes on the aqua racer and we got back to earlier this year because i recall that that during watches and wonders uh, yeah. that week it was in april we already spent a bit of time because then the aqua racer professional 300 was launched based on of course a watch that is uh, already with uh Takahori since the late 70s it was actually the last model line that was launched under the helm of Jack Horrier himself. There you go. And uh, the 844, that was the limited edition in reference to the original one, 844 pieces. But now here we have the, the regular models in actually three, not three different shapes because they're all 43, but in three different uh, layouts. What I have here is the most uh, luminized version. The Night Diver. If you will, the Night Diver. It's it's black. It's a bit what is it? PCD. It's, it's, it's um, DLC, I guess. Yeah, DLC. It is. Um, it has a beautiful white uh, color dial. It's my favorite, to be honest. Well, if I look at the tree. It's actually the reason why it's white. It's completely covered in in uh, luminova. So uh, when you have a night dive, for instance, that will be luminant like crazy. So the uh, the triangle on the turning bezel, which by the way is twelve sided has nothing to do with uh, with a royal oak by the way it's not a an ode to the royal oak it's it's simply if you go to your retailer and you turn this it makes sense that it's faceted and not round True. you simply have a better grip on it uh so no so the night diver is quite a spectacular watch if you don't dive just take it under your duvet when you're when your partner you have in your bed is asleep and see how luminous it is. So only the most important hands and uh, the uh, the turning bezel, the triangle on the turning bezel, will have a separate color. Uh, so the hour hand and the minute hand that will have different colors uh, luminous during the night. Because the, the most important is the minute hand and the triangle because that is uh, where you navigate how long time you have left in your oxygen tanks uh, in order to not... Use all your oxygens until you have to go up to the surface. Again, stop texting, boss man. I'm just checking now the price, to oh, be honest. Oh, by the way, it's inspired by an Aquatimer from... Um, Aquareza, sorry, not Aquatimer. Aquareza <laughs> from the mid-80s. Uh, I think around 90, 1984, 85, uh, which was also... You have to remember that... Takoya did some really serious, uh, serious divers watches. They also had a thousand meter uh, back in the 80s and the early 90s. Thick bastard. Uh, and I have to admit, I really like these. We were just wearing them when we started, before we started recording this. These are quite spectacular, really nice watches. What is the price of this one? 3,000 US and approximately a bit less in, uh, in euros, 2,900, 2,800. So what is it? Caliber 5, which is ETA? No, actually, this is the, the um, yeah, that's true. It's true. Yeah. Cool piece. I like especially the night diver. Forty-three millimeters. It's 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 not that bulky. I like it too. Yeah. I think it's yeah. um, it's not a watch for me. As as I'm al always looking at at odd things. I'm always saying I'm looking for the unusual, the complicated, and the independent. Well, this mm. is neither of three because it's a very regular watch. It's a watch that is not extremely standing out but the quality if you look at it and the wearability um makes it makes it desirable for me makes it a watch that you wear every day and always regarding price the price is really good and designed by a good friend of mine Guy Bouvet, who is now with Takoya for a couple of years yeah uh, i met him when he was with iwc in yeah. 2002 and then he was with uh, Chopin, and then he had a stint with Breitling. So he actually designed the very first Breitling uh, pilot's watches when Cairn kicked in. Okay. In, uh, was it around 16, 17? 16, 17, yeah, yeah, it's already four years like ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Guy Bouvet, he had his hands on, on a lot. And um, I know when, during Watches and Wonders, and we saw the uh, the revival of the Aqua Razor, if you like, he also did, a, 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 what, did he do a 37? Millimeter version as well? 36. 36? Yeah. I have. think that is really cool because back in the days, that was like with Tudor, you could get three three uh, versions of a diver, of a, a, a Tudor Submariner. You get the, the little tiny one, you get a, a mid-size, and you get the 40 millimeter as well. So, you know, you had the whole range of divers, kids, 
women, tiny guys, big guys, big women, big kids. Everybody could wear a Tudor Submariner. It's a pity that we don't have the 36 here right now, because yeah. I would love to see how that works out as an alternative for, yeah. for a man. Yeah. Of course, for female, it would be perfect. Yeah. But given the, the, the sportiness and given the, 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 of, this, of, the, of the case and of the watch as a whole, I think 36 could make sense. I don't rarely um, say this, but, but I'm very tempted. I have to admit that this, this, the Night Diver makes a lot of sense. I like everything about this watch. I like the integrated uh, rubber bracelet. You know, you have your micro adjustment. You have to have that on a modern watch today. Uh, but of course, this is 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 for the diver when you when you want to wear it outside your your wetsuit. And for that, what three thousand? How much? Three thousand ish euros. That's a pretty decent price. What are we comparing with? I don't know. Tudor Black Bay, Oris. No, Oris is less. Oris is much less, unless of course the no, caliber four hundred. With the four hundred, the caliber four hundred, absolutely yes. Maybe even a Norcane, but it, it, of course there is. It's, it's Norcane and Tudor. They they share the Kennedy movement. Yeah. So yeah. But you're right, absolutely. But don't rule out the the the, the, the appeal of the brand name Tag Heuer. Absolutely, it's a brand that is everywhere. That's what I remember from those uh, famous uh, press conferences by Mr. Biver on Basel World, when he said, I want you, if you're sporty, if you're doing sports, I want you to see Tag Heuer everywhere, on every field, on every racetrack, everywhere. Of course, he wouldn't say it like that. He would scream it and bang, he would say and it bang a bit the differently. table. I'm, I'm, the I'm table. way too modest to, yes, to imitate Mr. Biver here, yes. but it's uh, that's true. Cool watch. If you have 3,000 left in your pocket, uh, maybe it's worth popping down to your Tag Heuer retailer. And trying on, well, at least my favorite is the Night Diver, inspired from the mid-80s. Yep, we share that. Uh, water resistant to 300 meters, fitted with the automatic caliber 5, which we believe is an ETA. Um, and I just mentioned that Guy Bouvier designed this watch. But also what is really interesting is one of the most talented persons, she happens to be a, a, a wonderful woman as well, uh, Carole Forestier, she's actually with Takoya now. She did some of the finest watches when she was with Renault Papi. Mm -hmm. And she also, um, sorry, I'm not, a, I'm not, I was just with AP recently and they told me, Christian, it's not called Renault Papi no longer. It's called APRP. APRP. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, uh, but she is outrageously talented. I believe she actually developed the, uh, the tourbillon for Panerai back in the days. And then she was head of development at Cartier uh, with the fine watchmaking. Mm -hmm. And she did some revolutionary movements for Cartier. So she has been uh, um, an engine, um, unprecedented, I'd say, within Richemont. Yeah. She did so well. So I was very surprised when she moved from her very uh, high position within Richemont, especially at Cartier, to LVMH. But maybe they're just, LVMH are just uh, increasing the bar. I think they I are. I don't think she had anything to do with the Echo Racer, though. No, the Echo Racer was already planned, I guess, because this is the year, apparently and definitely the year of the Echo Racer at Tuck Hoyer. Mm. But uh, who knows what's up their sleeves for next year, 2022. Well, I have no idea. I only know that 2022 is the 50th anniversary of the Royal Oak. So let's see what AP is up to. That's probably a lot more uh, anniversaries. That's, that's the odd thing with being in the Swiss industry. Some of the brands are more than 300 years old, by Sean Constantin. Uh, and every year, someone is celebrating something big. 15, 20, 25, 100, 150, 175th anniversary, etc., etc. I remember with the Lange some years ago, they had like four different anniversaries in one year. Hey, that's a fun thing. Let's make an agenda and see. I don't think we will miss one single year without a big anniversary. No, oh, if we impossible. If we take everything into account, the iconic watches that we have, on, uh, later this week, we're going to discuss Rolex Daytona. Yes, we are with Watchbox. With Watchbox. That's on uh, Thursday. Uh, uh, on, on, on Daily Watch, please uh, watch that space. Uh, it will be a live session with four people involved. Uh, but uh, I think with the Daytona alone, you can find 
maybe 10 different anniversaries in the in the next 10 years or something. Yeah, you can also, if, if you calculate predate on us, you can get even more. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that's the fun anyway. thing about urology. There's always something to celebrate with the, yeah, with the because coffee. Yeah, you have to imagine that uh, horology is marketing driven. And uh, marketing, the marketing department, they love anniversaries. So anyway, that was 20 minutes of uh, the Omega Speedmaster Chronoscope and Speedmaster Chronoscope and the Takoya Acra Racer. I hope you had a good day. Professional Thank you 300. For, yeah, Professional 300. So if you're an amateur, of course, you can't wear it. Yes. So weird. Uh, subscribe, tune into all our social media platforms and uh, tune in next week. Take care. Thank you for listening.